Welcome back to the Bonsai Movie Crew. It is like 9.30 in the morning. We're recording early because it's 4th of July. Happy 4th of July. Yeah, happy 4th, 4th of 4th. July. Happy America Day. Um, yeah, this is unusual. <laughs> instead of having a drink, I'm drinking coffee instead. <laughs> I got Pepsi. I got ice. I got coffee. It's good coffee, too. You know, some ice from that coffee. Ew. A little Mountain Dew into it. Do I look like a basic white bitch? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> he just needs the boots with the fur. Yeah, yeah the, the Uggs or whatever they're, or whatever they're called. <laughs> I'll come in here like off the down. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. like <laughs> New boot goofing. <laughs> I just got back from the buckle. <laughs> oh, God. That's just Apple expensive, ain't it? Jeans, boots with the fur. <laughs> All right. Uh, as usual, make sure you check out our. Hold on a minute. Oh, oh yeah, you need your. I can't cliff even notes. see my notes, man. Oh, oh, we we were not prepared. Hold oh, please. Early, your people. call is very important to us. Yep. All right. Uh, make out. Blah, 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 make out. Yeah. Make out. <laughs> make out with the person next to you. <laughs> if it's your sister, I'm not. I dare you. No, <laughs> no balls. No balls. Oh, yeah, wait. Sorry, know. Eric. <laughs> I'm leaving. Yeah, I don't. Karen's like, stay up. Do it. I'll punch you in the face. <laughs> she don't have to worry about it. I'll stay over here. <laughs> uh, make sure you check out our TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, our YouTube, our Rumble. And make sure you like, share, and subscribe to all that good stuff. And um, make sure you leave us a comment. Comment, comment, man. We got some good comments last week, though. Ooh. I'm pretty happy about that. Um, also, uh, make sure you get on Spotify and rate us because that would be really cool and pretty awesome of you. Do that for us, please. Um, anyway. Yeah. Thank you to everybody that commented. Last yeah, it week. was awesome. Thank you very, very much. Very much appreciated. Yep. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad we're getting out there a little bit and people are starting to listen and, and Notice. that makes us happy. That makes us very happy. Makes us feel like we're actually doing something on and here. We'll try to interact with you as much as we can. We don't we don't we, we love hearing other people's opinions, so we do. Um all right. Uh I don't have any news this week, so I I looked there was like it was dead. I didn't see any movie. Yeah, news. I'm like I'm looking around, I'm like, wow, there's nothing going on right now. This so. is all political news. It's yeah, it's always political or it's anything. like it's like uh something to do with like Oh one Julian of the Kardashians. Sands died. Like they did find his body. Who? Julian Sands, the guy who played um, oh poop. Um, he played the the. God, I can't think of it. He was a the a male witch. It was a. Uh... Shit, hold a on. Male witch? Up. You cannot. You don't know jail Julian Sands? No, I don't think so. Unless I they've saw been his... looking for him for like months. They finally found his body. A male witch? Yeah, that's like his most famous role, but he's been in other stuff. Warlock. Um, he was in Arachnophobia, Room with a View, Boxing Alina, um, Rose Red, Leaving Las Vegas. Uh, a bunch of stuff. So where was he? Um, he went hiking, and he went missing, and they couldn't find him, and they finally found his body. Okay. Um, that's about the one thing I rem forgot about that last week. I was going to mention it. Maybe he fell over, like had a heart attack while he was walking or something. Um, I don't know if they released the cause of death, but they did find the body and they confirmed that it was him, hmm. which was really kind of sad to me. I really liked yeah. him. Uh, well, there is some other news. I guess Robert De Niro's grandson died. died. Oh, I didn't hear about that. Yeah. He apparently they found him dead. He was only 19. Oh, that's true. So they found awful. him. They found him dead. He was like dead in his room or something. They didn't release any reason why or anything. That's really oh, awful. Also, Alan Arkin died. Yes, Alan Arkin died. June twenty ninth. The dad from um, God, Edward Scissorhands. The oh, he was still alive. Yeah. Holy crap! That dude was old. Yeah, he died. Yeah. Rest in peace. Man, we're just full of like uh, not good news. See, this is why I was like, I don't have any news. And you guys well, are like, we have to this person died. But we have to honor them. I guess. I mean, we got to talk about it. 
So there's that. How about we stop saying died and start saying... They were elevated to a new life No, form. say they lived until this day. Yeah, they lived until that day. <laughs> they lived until yesterday. <laughs> um, yeah. So All right. Remember their life, not their death. Julian Sands died. What did he like doing? Hiking. That's a positive note. <laughs> Alan just died of old age, I think. O- old age. <laughs> On a positive note there, he probably didn't know because... You know. Uh, all right. Well, let's get into uh, blah blah blah. Everybody, what do you what do y'all been watching, man? What the hell have you been watching? Not much, really. I watched the machine. I got around to that, and then I watched the hunt. I watched Daddy's Home too. <laughs> Not a lot, but here's a list. <laughs> we have a ghost. Tin and Tina day shift. Deep Red was the Joe Bob movie, and Who's Line. That's a lot, Karen. That's a lot. You're it like, wouldn't have been so much if much. we'd have done it yesterday because I watched a lot last night. Oh. Yeah, you watched a lot. Yesterday dude. and last night. You're like, ah, oh, we didn't watch that much and then but here's ten things I did watch. Yeah. It wouldn't <laughs> have been much, but then we kinda got on a streak yesterday. Oh. What about you, Eric? So I watched uh and Res- Sunday. Resident <laughs> Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. The show? No, it's a movie. Oh yeah, it's like the newest thing. Yeah, they it's got actually got a fair decent decent amount of actors in there. Really? It, it yeah. does, but the problem is they tried to squeeze two games into one fucking movie. Yeah, that's and that's the, what irritated me yeah. about it. That could have had a solid movie if they would have just stuck with the first game. Yeah, if they would have stuck with the first game, and then, then come like, out with like the next, you know, yeah, call the next one "Welcome to Raccoon City" and then yeah, Claire and Leon in it. But whatever, but they, let's they, do it this way. <laughs> I think the actors did pull off. Except for Leon. Yeah, Leon was a little bit of a bitch. Yeah, I'm like, dude, why'd you make this guy so incompetent? Like, yeah. I don't understand. Everybody Somebody... else did good. I mean, for Chris, Jill, and all their... The yeah, I like them. I yeah. thought they did a good job. Yeah. yeah. You know, characterizing their characters and shit. They were setting it up for a sequel, too, and they kind of... I don't think that's going to happen. I think the sequel would have been good if, like you said, they would have actually done it in Racket yeah. City. You, you cracked me up when you sent me that video of Barry. Oh, where he just keeps dying? <laughs> yeah. Because we always talked about how in the first video game, the very first iteration of Resident Evil before the director's cut was released, if you played it at the very end, like Barry would keep showing back up. So like he died in the tunnel originally, but it was like when they released the game, they forgot that they killed him. So they kept like bringing him back. So like in all these cut scenes, he'd be there. So like he died in the tunnel and then he'd be like running next to you in a scene. And then, like, he'd be back again and back again and back again. And then, like, in the last scene with the the helicopter when you were leaving, he'd clap his hand on your shoulder like, we made it, buddy. And you're like, no, you didn't. <laughs> you're <laughs> like, a figment you're, of my you died imagination. Five you fucking you times. died like a hundred times. You're not here, really. I'm just in, I'm just tripping balls. Apparently, in one of the movies, they actually referenced that yeah. that that was a thing oh. that they uh, that they fucked up that in that movie. I can't remember or which in that one game. It is. It's it's a. Uh... Like it had Lee on it, Barry in it. Uh, shit. Yeah, I don't remember. But he it's sent like me. He he sent yeah. me the clip of it. Barry dies like seventeen times in this scene. Well, the movie. he gets shot, and he's like shot. Got hit by like one of the big like light or what the hell was liquors? I called them liquors. Oh yeah, yeah. Got hit by one of the big ass liquors, and you he's like, oh yeah, he's dead. And then he sits up. <laughs> yeah. He starts shooting at all these other guys. He starts getting shot all to death. You know, the hell back. And then you, you see him, he sits back up, starts shooting him again, he gets shot again, and he's like, pops a cigar in his mouth, and he's just laying there, and he's breathing, and he's like, <laughs> dude, just die. Yeah. <laughs> so, I watched uh, that one, and then I watched Who, Whose Line Is It Anyways, and then uh, I watched Team America. Team America. <laughs> Fuck America. yeah. That's a good, that's a good 4th of July. That's like a good America. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. America. Fuck, Fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kick the motherfucking ass, yeah, yeah. America. Sorry. Uh, all I watched this week was uh, all I watched this week was the machine. So, did you like it? I did. I enjoyed I did it. Too. I liked it. I thought it was pretty funny. Like, I haven't got a chance to watch. Bert was the best part of the whole movie. Yeah, it was funny, but it was like it was so predictable. Oh yeah, extremely. But it was like, no, I don't know. Like the part at the end with the girl and the dad and everything. I didn't call that. I was like. I mean, I kind of called it, but I was like, but then it happened, and I was like, oh, 
<laughs> you know, yeah. I didn't want to give anything away. If no yeah, I don't want to give it. anything away, but I felt like the it was a very predictable story plot. But like it was, but not not in a bad way, if that makes sense. Not in a bad it way. It wasn't no. like you know, it, it was very like, different. Everybody's like, ah, it's just another comedy action movie. Well, I no, I mean, it was it was pretty. It was, I thought it was. Fairly I wasn't original. bored. No, I was just like, okay, I know what's going to happen next, and I know what's going to happen next, yeah. and then you know. And Bert does a really great job. Like, if you like his yeah. stand up, yeah, yeah, it's, like you're going to love this movie because you're going to like it because of him. Yeah, yeah, it was like, good. He's, he's fucking hilarious. Yeah, so I really liked it. I thought it was a good movie. Mm-hmm. Um. Anyway, that's all I watched. I didn't watch anything. I just watched that movie and that was it. And obviously the movie for this. Anyway. Let's go ahead and get into this goddamn movie. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Let's talk about the movie. All right. uh, Do you want to give a plot synopsis? I can. I don't know. I didn't print it out this week. So. (laughs) Okay. So 2006 Slither. A small town is taken over by an alien plague, turning residents into zombies and all forms of mutant monsters. It's one hour and 35 minutes, starring Nathan Fillion as Bill Party, Elizabeth Banks as Starla Grant, Michael Rooker as Grant Grant, and written and directed by James Gunn. It's funny because on the fandom page, whenever it says uh, Michael Rooker, it says Grant, Grant, Grant. So his middle name's Grant, too? Well, no, like, that's his nickname oh. is just Grant. I'm like, no, that's just his name. <laughs> yeah, that's just his name. It says Grant, Grant, Grant. Like, I like you know how the... somebody would say, like, like if his name was, like, Eric's name was Moxie. Like, it'd be, like, Eric Moxie. Yeah, like, Douglas, we all called him you know Moxie, I mean? but yeah. his first name was actually yeah, Eric. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's a weird <laughs> nickname. I don't know how I came up with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Moxie. I got a lot of Moxie. <laughs> <laughs> it's because he's so pretty all the time. <laughs> yeah. You are a handsome devil. Oh, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Me and my hair. Uh, Your long hair. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Do you need me to read any of it this week? Um, You want half? You want to do half? I can do half. It's not really half, though. Yeah, it's a little less than half. Yeah. I'll take the last sentence. <laughs> <laughs> there is like one standalone sentence. Uh, all right. So anyway, we're going to get into the movie here. Uh, oh, actually, oh, you guys, uh, would you recommend it? Or would you rewatch? Sorry, it's early. Yeah. Um, let me get a sip of that. We'll get. We'll get there. A sip of that juice. <clears throat> See, that's why you should have got a large. That's why I should have had a straw. <laughs> Them for the ASMR. This is only my second time watching this movie. Oh, I've seen this movie a bunch. This is I'm my a, first. It's only my second. It's your time. first, really? Oh. I've never watched any of the Slither Slither movies. There's I've never only, seen the, only the one, other man. one. Well, I thought there was two. I thought there was a, a there's old there's 50s. a there's a there's a uh one that was made in like the forties fifties. But it's not the same. Not the same. It? No. no, it's not the same movie. It's not. This is not a remake or anything. See, I rented this off of um I rented it off of Amazon. So. I own it. I thought I did, and I did. I had. A I was like, "Well, maybe I'll go to Walmart and I'll have it." That's a long shot. No, oh, yeah, they didn't have it. Yeah, they didn't have it. <laughs> I should don't have, have just a, ordered it. Don't have FYE it. or anything yeah. like that anymore. So it's out of print, I think. Now, I don't remember when that's we bought it. I think why, we bought it when it was released on Blu-ray. I'm sure, you can find it on Amazon though to buy. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, might be a little bit. Pricey. Anyway, would you guys rewatch? I would. Yeah, I. I liked it the first time. I remember liking it the first time I watched it and then watching it again. I, I still liked it. Yeah. I'd tell people to watch it. I might rewatch it again. It'd be something I'd have to like kind of make myself to because I think I'd need to give it another shot. But I think for me, this movie holds a very special place in my heart. Fuck. I've always loved James Gunn's movies like he did yeah. Super. He did. This is like the first movie of his that I watched. But he did Super and he did... Um, He's done a few good movies. Like, he did the Suicide Squad movie. Yeah. The new one. And then he made all the Guardians of the Galaxy movies and stuff. But, like, this is, beef. This is like, pre-Marvel James Gunn. Mm-hmm. And this is where, like, he really shines. Like, if you've ever seen Super, you see his directing style. And I think that this his shows... His grotesque humor. <laughs> I think that this shows him as a fan. 
of movies. Oh, you know what I mean? Like it shows. Yeah, all, there's all kinds of Easter. eggs. It shows all kinds of Easter eggs and nods to mm-hmm. to different yeah. Yeah. horror movies and things like that. And I think that that I think that's a very endearing thing to show is to show directors. Yeah, this is definitely movies. a fan movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but also. I love Nathan Fillion. Yes. I love Elizabeth, Elizabeth Banks. Banks. I, she, oh, God, I love her. And dude, it, and this movie is so, so quotable. Mm-hmm. There's so many lines in this movie, like, bitch is hardcore. <laughs> like, you know? Like, <laughs> and Michael so Rooker, many good movies. he's usually such an intense actor. And to see him play, like, not that he was really not intense in this movie, but to but see him play a role. You tell he was having fun. Yeah, to see I know him play he had a role a lot like of, this. Like, I know that the makeup and stuff really took a lot of time, but James Gunn said he was a fucking trooper. And yeah. And the thing kinda... that really kills me is like, this is the second or the next time that he played a bad guy was this after Henry. So to play such an intense role as Henry and then the next time he plays a bad guy is in this. Yeah. Kind of blows my mind a little bit. I, I love Michael Rooker. Yeah. The grenade um, scene had me cracking the fuck up. The what? The, the grenade, grenade scene. Oh, uh, where he dropped it. Where he's like. <laughs> he's like, yes, we can. And then. Oh, oh fuck. fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was the one weapon he thought he had. And he's like. It goes into the pool. He's like, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that grenade took a minute to blow yeah, up. Yeah. It yeah. did. All right. When Good. he dropped it the second time, I'm like, get, you're screwed. Get yeah, into seconds. the water. And he's like, and he's like, <laughs> like, he was just kind of like <laughs> yeah. dumbfounded by it. His uh, reactions to everything were amazing. Yeah. I, that's why I love Nathan. This movie. It, I don't know if you guys have ever seen what they call PG porn. Oh, and yeah. James Gunn did all those. Yeah. Yeah. So like he had like actual porn stars with like real actors in there and they would do like this parody of a porn <laughs> or something. And uh, <laughs> the ones with Nathan Fillion were. Oh hilarious. yeah, where he's a construction worker, and like uh, the girl comes in, like, "Yeah, my husband's away." And she like gets down on her knees, and he's got the nail gun. He's like, and he actually puts a nail in her head. Like, he, oh like, fuck! Cleans it off, puts it in her hand, and walks away. Like, do do do. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's fucking hilarious, dude. Uh, and then he did another one with uh, where James Gunn himself actually starred in it, where he was a mechanic, and the girl pulls her car into the garage. And uh, he's like, she's like, so are you going to, uh, what What do you say? Are you going to um, check the dipstick? Check the like- dipstick or something <laughs> yeah. like, and he's like, yeah, I'm checking. It. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And they're like, and he's like, man, I'd like to, I'm going to, I'm going to get all up. Or what do you say? I just want to pet that pussy. And he's like, and she's like, oh, and he's like, what are you talking about? What is wrong with you? I'm talking about the kittens in your back seat. It's fucking, if you haven't seen the PG porn stuff, it's fucking hilarious yeah it's really good stuff <laughs> um there's another one with uh the dude who played uh lex luther from super Na- or not from smallville mm-hmm. and uh he plays um charlie brown it's a charlie brown porn parody mm-hmm. and it's fucking hilarious dude he just like by the end of it like you think that all, all the charlie brown characters are gonna get it on and then he ends up murdering all the charlie brown characters mm-hmm. you should watch the excuse me you should watch the um if you ever get a chance, the DVD commentary between James Gunn and Nathan Fillion for this movie, because there's like one where they're talking about how they filmed this in Canada or whatever. And, um, Nathan Fillion is from Canada. And, um, James Gunn was talking about when you film in Canada, you have to have certain like Canadian actors or whatever to fill roles to, um, to film in Canada or whatever, to get the rights to or whatever. And, um, Nathan Fillion's kind of sitting there, you know, and um, he's like, are you trying to infer something? You know, like he gave him the job because he was a Canadian or whatever, Canadian. you know, and he's like, no, no, you got the job organically or whatever. And he's like, organically? <laughs> you know, he just like, he just keep, he keeps giving James Gunn like the whole time. I love time. Nathan Fillion. He's such a playful dude. It's funny. Anyway. Anyway, uh, from here. We're going to get into the movie, and there are going to be heavy, heavy, heavy spoilers. If you haven't seen this movie, you can rent it on Amazon, which is where I rented it, or you can buy it, I guess, or whatever. There's really nowhere you can stream it right now. So, anyway, uh, a meteorite housing a malevolent sentient. I don't know why I didn't understand that word. (laughs) <laughs> Sentient extra extraterrestrial parasite crashes into the town of we Wheelsey Wheelsey South Carolina. Name for it town. is a weird name Wheelsey. Well, Wheelsey South Carolina. While frolicking in the woods with Brenda, local car dealer Grant 
Grant. I didn't know he was a car dealer. No, I didn't either. It never said what he no, did. No, they never said what he did. I didn't they just know he... said he was rich. Yeah, he just said he had a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, local car dealer Grant Grant finds the parasite. <laughs> <laughs> His name cracks me up. Fucking time. Grant Grant. <laughs> <laughs> Who would name their kid the same feel, yeah. name as their last name? I, you know what? I really like our last name. Let's name him Grant. Let's name him Grant. <laughs> Uh, is infected and uh, uh, infected by it. the parasite takes over his body and absorbs the consciousness and memories, or absorbs his consciousness and memories. With the alien now in control of his body, Grant begins to. I love how they have it in like single quotes. Grant, like it's his name. <laughs> it's his name <laughs> begins to slowly. It's not short for anything. Yeah, it's not like short Grant for anything. Tholium, Grant, Grant, you or something like, like, like Grant Tholomew. Grant Tholomew. <laughs> Begins to slowly change into a tentacle slug like monster. Bartholomew. So, this should have been his uh, middle name, Grantholomew. <laughs> so, the beginning, whenever uh, he picks up uh, what's her face at the school. Oh, uh, yeah. Starla uh, picks up Starla. Starla. That was and, so like, there's a cro- and just... Oh, yeah. You know, that was James Gunn there, right? Oh, the teacher. The, the teacher yeah, she was teacher. talking to. That was yeah. James Gunn, the director. Yeah. Um, but, um, like, whenever they're standing across the street, and the female police officer is like helping the kid or whatever, and he call and he says something about her genie, or genie, <laughs> or her her, her jiny, sorry, yeah. something about her jiny, and I'm like, what the fuck is a jiny? Like <laughs> he said vagina, but the kid only heard gina. Or well, he said uh, your vagina or something like that. Yeah. And she, he's like, what's a jiny? <laughs> and I'm like, what? And he's like, it's a what do you say? It's a it's like a state <laughs> a, or something a, like that, it's or a, a town, town and. Somewhere I can't remember it's, where. It, yeah, he's like, it's a town, <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. Okay, he's like, your uh, mom's over there. Go. <laughs> uh, these were pretty rude people. People for small town folk. Fuck yeah! Like the all right. So in the bar, <laughs> so like I said, this is a very quotable movie. <laughs> and uh, that girl walks up to him, and she's like, she's like. Hey Grant, and he's like, "Oh, hey girl," you know, being all stupid and shit. He's he's like, "Yeah, I'm so and so's little sister." She's he's like, she's like, "I always had a crush on you." He's like, "Girl, you couldn't been more ten or eleven. She's like, "I was still game." Like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <You> fucking hick. <laughs> like, <laughs> like they make these 11. South Car- like okay. So I know it's like what is it, South Carolina? I think it was South Carolina. South Carolina. I'm like, I know you guys are southern, but you're not that southern. Like, mm-hmm. you're in South Carolina. Like you get me West Virginia or Virginia. I know that's South, more South, but like Virginia, that's that's hick to me. You know what I mean? Like or like you know what I mean? Like it's just it. They were just such rude people for being like small town people. Like it didn't make much sense to me because it's like I don't know. You go to a place like that, you don't expect people to be like such jerks to each other. I guess. Yeah, they are really, especially the mayor. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, like, the mayor was my favorite though. He was like, he was like. Get the fuck out of the way, asshole! And then, and then hi, like, Mayor. hi, Mayor. You're like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> can't win them all. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. He's, yeah. Is that what he said? Yeah, like, he's like, you can't oh, win yeah, them all. Can't win them all. <laughs> My favorite line though was when he was in the car. I don't know. He says, "Easy come, easy go." Yeah, like that. yeah. My favorite line was when he was in the car. And he said, "Oh, with I, the Mr. Pib." No, yeah, the yeah, Mr. Mr. Pib scene, but he was like. <laughs> If Mr. I Pibbs, about, the only Coke I like. Yeah. <laughs> but he's, if I weren't about to shit my pants, that'd be fucking fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> he does have some good lines in the yeah, movie. He does. <laughs> All right. Many uh many pets soon disappear, but Grant is now sus- is not suspected. However, his wife Starla begins to question his health. He explains the initial changes in his appearance as an allergic reaction to a bee sting. Uh <laughs> Run, bitch, run. That ain't no bee sting. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> he uh, explains the initial... Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, saying that the, a doctor has already given him something for it. But Starla soon learns that it, this is a lie. Starla contacts the police chief, Bill Party, her childhood crush. I wouldn't say her. it was her childhood. It was more like his childhood crush. No, they both had it in for each other. <clears throat> yeah, maybe. They didn't really state it that way though. Like, yeah, she's she very much. At, she showed up at his house, wanting him to be her bodyguard. There's right, like, there's like a lot of like little. There's a past there, but I, you know, they don't ever state like they more or less put it in the mindset that he's, she was his childhood crush. I think she had it for him. Too. <laughs> Maybe, but they don't really. Yeah, I guess they don't state. They don't really it, go I think that it's way inferred. with it. 
maybe a little bit because like obviously most of her attention is on Grant. So, like, throughout the entire I time. think she had the childhood crush on him first, and then as she got older, he started getting a crush for her. Okay, you picked up a lot more than we did from that, so. Well, in that scene where he where she's talking about how she was, she snuck over to his house to say, I'm running, running town. Well, he was the older one, and he's the one that called her dad to go pick her up from the bus station. I think then she had to crush Yeah, I, I picked it up from that scene, too. Like, it was more like the way she was describing it and talking. I got that she had a thing for him, too, there. Like, just the, the way that she was describing it and talking to him. Maybe. Uh, Okay, hold on a second. Okay, Starla can talk... Blah, blah, blah. Starla contacts the police chief, Bill Party, her childhood crush, who attempts to reassure her and comfort her while not acting on his feelings. Uh, honestly, I think that the only mo- thing about this movie that really dings it for me is that little crush, that whole thing between the two. That like, it doesn't bother me that much, but it's just probably one of my biggest issues with the movie is that because I'm like, eh, it's not necessary. I mean, I get why it is necessary, but in my mind, I'm like, you could have went a different route. I guess I think but- that it adds a level to it without being a hindrance because they don't actually act on it, but right. it adds a level of. <clears throat> his protection for her. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I think it, it doesn't, it's, it doesn't bother me at all because it, it doesn't it take helps. away from the movie because they don't act on it, but it adds to the movie. Right. In my opinion, that's just me. Adds more to the drama. Yeah. It's or it gives so him a better reason. It's so yeah. weird it seeing him, Elizabeth more... Banks as the hottest chick in the movie. Like everybody's <laughs> looking at her like, Oh my God. Like she is pretty. Though. She is very pretty, pretty, but I'm like, I'm thinking like, that's the best you have in town. Like, I mean, I get that she's very pretty and stuff, but like, she ain't got no junk in the trunk. You know what I mean? She's, <laughs> yeah, she's, you know, she's, she's a not, very, she's very, you know, she's not very curvy. No, so I'm like, man, you guys got like some like weird. I think standards. Elizabeth Banks is beautiful. Just oh, for sure, for she's, her, a, she's a gorgeous woman. Well, it's I'm also just, her, her her whole personality. Like, there. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think she's her. a. She seems like a really great person. Yeah. Um. All right, so Grant impregnates the lonely and neglected Brenda with hundreds of his offspring. That is so weird. <laughs> she <clears throat> that, got what she wanted. And I love that she come out with like, like he went over there to her house. And she comes out, she's like, I got cheese and crackers. I'm like, fuck them. Ooh, <laughs> cheese and crackers. Yeah, she's, <laughs> she's win the- Win me over with that. <laughs> she's the epitome of like trash. Oh yeah, she's like, she's like trailer park trash pretty much. Uh, he hides in her, uh, hides her in an isolated barn where he, he feeds her raw meat and dead animals. Mad with abnormal hunger, she becomes massively obese to the point of inflating into a gargantuan sphere of flesh and baby alien slugs grow inside her. Wow, that is very descriptive. Gargantuan sphere of flesh as baby <laughs> aliens, alien slugs grow that's, inside that's, her. Okay, that's pretty much what happens. Yeah, that's what happens. Like if yeah. it, they couldn't put it any other way, that's Mm-mm. exactly what she was. Uh, I don't even know how the fuck that. I don't think skin can even stretch that far. But no, <laughs> no. it starts to like break point. apart, and it was like, like yeah, like the se- like the seams started. Oh. I was like, yeah. <laughs> This movie is, does a very good job of being There was gross. no bones in the body or no organs. It no. was just straight skin with slugs inside. Yeah. It. That was it. Like, this, I even wrote this down. Like, they do, like, it is so gross in some scenes. Like, mm-hmm. like, the, like Grant's body, the slime, even the fucking little alien pod at the very beginning that shoots that barb into him. I'm yeah. like, ugh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so slimy and gross. Mm-hmm. Just imagine slimy slut or uh, fucking... Silly putty. Yeah. Slimy silly putty. Oh, uh, yeah. Cool. That's exactly what it looks like. There's a lot of grossness. And they're like, ah, oh, man. <laughs> a lot of grossness in this movie. But I love it. Mm-mm. I like things that can make me squirm. Mm, true. Uh, okay, hold on. Let me look, find my spot. Okay, so on. Bill leads a small group of officers on a hunt for Grant. They find Brenda, who begs them to feed her as she is still hungry, so hungry. Her body starts rumbling and completely explodes, releasing hundreds of alien slugs. Dude. Okay, so... I'm not going to ding this movie too hard for its CGI. 
But some of it's a little bit like... That scene's the worst offender for me. Not just that scene, but also the end scene, I think. Yeah, but I think that that scene's worse than the end scene, in my opinion. Like, that because there's so many slugs that are happening and, like, the way that... You can really tell the CGI. That scene is Yeah, that was the thing. Yeah, yeah, I get that because, like, it's the one thing... Like, you'd think that the little slugs would be, like, the easiest thing to CG, right? Mm -hmm. Because they're all the same. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? When there's one slug, it's not so bad. When there was like hundreds of them yeah, happening there, yeah. it was really bad. And then the worst scene in that scene is where him and Starla are laying down and he covers her mouth and they're laying there and then like they get covered up with them. That was poor. poor. I think the reason why that was so poor was because it it, 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 there was like definitely a disconnect between them and the slugs. Yeah. Like you would expect their clothes to be moving, then be all slimy or something once, once they were done crawling all over them. No, they weren't. And I think that was kind of like, they could have done a little more with that. You know I think I mean? you hit the nail on the head when you said there was a disconnect because it was like, it was like the, the, the slugs were in one place and they were in another. Like yeah. you didn't, you didn't it believe didn't that look, they were yeah. actually crawling on exactly. them at all. Yeah. 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 And I think that was a big, big deal for me i'm sure like a cg like an a, 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 uh an fx artist would probably have a heyday with this movie yeah. like oh yeah you, can, you know and i think james gunn even said that that was his worst or that he thought that that was the worst scene too in the, the dvd slugs. commentary i saw he probably i'm sure i'm pretty sure especially after all these years and like because this movie came out in 06 mm -hmm. like even then cg was still it was still i mean it was in its infancy a little bit but it was still good it was getting to that point where it was mm -hmm. good like you had movies, I mean, if Jurassic Park could do it back in the '90s and do it better than this, that you got a problem here. Yeah, but whatever. I'm not. Yeah, gonna... Jurassic Park was a lot of animatronic. Though. Yeah, well, yeah, it I, was. Know. Yeah. I know. There was a lot of practical effects in Jurassic yeah. Park. But I, I don't know. I'm not going to ding the movie too hard on. on no, the I'm. Pirate, so. No, I think Cause, it's cause more. Because a lot of the practical heavy. stuff. I think it's good. more plot heavy. Yeah, well, it's more entertaining. More for entertaining value than CG. Yeah, yeah. that mean, um, in this movie, I'm gonna say like the practical effects really make up for it. Yeah, like absolutely. Grant's makeup and everything, oh, yeah. it looks so good. So, but uh, anyway, um, where was I? Uh, her body starts to rumble completely, explodes, and really soon. Okay, most of Bill's group are infected by slugs and become Grant's puppets, speaking as if they were Grant and obsessed with bringing Starla home and holding her to her wedding vows. Dude. Okay, so this is the part. Yeah, so the part where they get in the car and uh, he calls the girl on the radio and, okay, so yeah, okay, so they, the part in the car where they're, they're, uh, he's calling the lady the, the back at the station and she's like, Pam. Yeah. And she, yeah. Pam. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because I've never really seen her in anything like this before. Like to play this kind of like ditzy role, you know what she I mean? She was married to James Gunn. She was? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. That's cool. The guy, there was supposed to be, so I don't think I put this in trivia because I don't know. People get weird about this kind of thing. They think that she got the role because she was married to James Gunn, but that's not necessarily true. Um, there was another person that was supposed to have the role, and the role was way different. It was actually supposed to be a cop, and it was supposed to be a guy. The person that had the role backed out at the last minute, and he knew that she always wanted to be a zombie, and she always wanted to you know, play this kind of role or whatever. So at the last minute, he was like, hey, happy birthday, because it was her birthday. Um, do you want this role? And you can do this. And she's like, cool. Yeah, I want to do it. And so he made it a receptionist because she had just gotten the role in the office and gave it to her. So that's kind of how that went down because she was married to him at the time. So everybody kind of thought that it was because she was married to him. But it's not exactly why she got the role. Okay. Well, we all know her as Pam from The Office. Yeah. So that and she was also in Blades of Glory. Yeah, yeah. So is that what it's called? Blades of Glory. Yeah, Blades of Glory. She's a good actress. I've, I mean, no, I think she's funny. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. she seems cool. Yeah. Uh, oh, where was I? Oh, okay. Everyone in town quickly. Eat, uh, oh, well, I forgot to say, this is the part where like she hits the one person with the or hits the one person with the car, 
And then she sticks that fucking steak in him. Yeah. And he's just like, he's like hard, bitch is hardcore. <laughs> and then he gets into it with him about the uh, the Mr. Pib. Mr. Pib's the only coke I like. <laughs> like God damn, dude. Which is the most southern line in this whole movie. It's the only coke I like. <laughs> you know, going back to the part where Grant's attacking her in the house after he, she he starts really turning. And like the and uh, what's his name comes in and him and the other deputies come in. They're getting ready to shoot. And he's like, "What the fuck was that?" <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that part. Oh crazy. yeah, the part where he's like, "Oh my god!" He, Nathan Fillion probably has all, all the best lines yeah. in this movie. Well, it's the way he plays this hero, and it is in trivia. The way he described how he played this hero is spot on. I cannot wait to read that for you because it's 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 spot on. It's exactly how I when I watched it, I'm like. Yeah, it's perfect. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck was that? What the fuck was, the fuck was that? Was that? <laughs> I mean, how else would you like? Yeah. If, how, it, that's the thing is, like, he says all the lines that you're like, that's exactly what you're thinking well, in your okay. head. Like, what the fuck was that? Most of the time, when you see a hero in movies, right? They're oh, they've always got the right thing to say, right? Like, oh, we've got to do this and we've got to do that, and they've always got a plan and they've always got you know. He has no plan. He has no plan. He has you know. He's just like, what the fuck? He's just going with the flow of it. Yeah, he's and you know, like, what was the part where um the like when he saves the girl from the deer or when she saves him from the deer yeah. and he's like you know when we tell this story i'm gonna t- tell it the other way and yeah. she's like well if we survive and then at the very end that's what he tells he's like you want to tell her about how i saved you from that deer you yeah. know and then she's like oh yeah he saved, he saved me, saved from, me a from a deer, deer. <laughs> you know <laughs> like or the part where he's like uh the fuck part was it he says everything she's like she's like hey be careful he's like yeah there's a thought you know what i mean like (laughs) yeah yeah or like when uh they're they're talking about um something and he and she's like you're being awful negative he's like it's been that kind of day (laughs) you know yeah that reminds me one of my favorite things about feast was how it turned that kind of stuff on its head people don't appreciate feast i was gonna say we need to add that to the box yeah that's a good fucking movie and a lot of people don't appreciate that i love that movie i'm like that movie turns a lot of your old like your tropes it's almost I would say Wes Cravian in that way. Like he, t- they turn those tropes on their head, and that's what I I'm, appreciate, I'm adding appreciate that to the about a good movie. Because that needs I wouldn't to be say we're going to watch all of them. We'll watch the first one. I'm not. Gonna we're watch, just going to watch the first. Yeah, one. we're not going to watch the other two. Like because they get kind of shitty. But that was that was easily like my favorite part in Feast was when you know, and that's kind of what I love about Nathan Fillion's character is like in Feast. You know, he's like oh, I'm the guy that's going to save your ass, and then he gets pulled out the window and fucking dies. Yeah, exactly. You know, I'm the guy that's going to save your ass, and then. He gets his head bit off. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Everyone in town quickly eaten or absorbed into Grant's hive mind, uh, except Starla, Bill, Mayor, Jack McCready. McCready. McCready? McCready, I think. McCready. It's McCready. It's McCready. McCready. Yeah. And a teenage girl, Kylie, who escaped a partial bonding in which she saw the slug's memories, which I thought was kind of a cool scene. I really yeah. liked how they t- kind of turned that trope on its head with the teenage girl. Yeah. Like she's supposed to be this teenage girl kind of annoying. You see it at the dinner table where she's kind yeah. of like, you know, you're like, yeah, she's going to die. Yeah. And, she's going to die. You're like, yeah. Oh, when they say you need to stay in the house tonight, you're like, no, nah, she's not going to stay in the house. She's going to get, she's going to get killed. Yeah. And then no, she survives. Like she's the only one that yep. survives. Mm-hmm. Uh, you notice that whole scene there was like a Freddy Cougar thing, right? Yeah. It's in trivia. The, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. So, uh, so the she absorbs all slugs memories. It moves from planet to planet, eating or absorbing all life, and it finds there. The parasite's consciousness, however, is influenced by the real Grant's memories and his love for his wife Starla. So I don't see yeah. that as love. I see that as like it's like it's like. Uh, it's like muscle memory kind of. Yeah, so it yeah, acts on exactly. how Grant feels. Yeah. And it kind of it kind of goes with it. I see what he was trying to do here like with like okay so we're going to do it this like it's going to take over Grant but it's still going to act on Grant's feelings. Well Grant's gone. That's something I didn't didn't know but I found it out. Grant's gone. Grant died. So like it's more moment, like it's just the moment that on... thing entered him, he's dead. Oh, okay. James Gunn said that in one of the DVD commentaries or whatever. And I think I put it in trivia. And if I didn't, I'm just going to say it now. But 
Grant died the moment that thing entered him, but it did retain all of his memories. I thought you keep saying of, entered him. Yeah, but it, it <laughs> died. He died as soon as as soon as that happened, and then like it entered Grant. Yeah, as soon as that happened, he died, and then like it got all of his memories and everything, but it retained all of that stuff. So yeah, meanwhile, it doesn't understand like love or whatever, but it does understand loneliness. Well, what I'm so saying is, like, I don't think Grant was in love with. I think he used, he was. She was more of a property to him than I th- love. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. was not. Love. It was like a pretty object that he owned. You yeah. know, I think I think I did put it. Um, yep, I did put it in there. So it explains it much better than I can. So I can just wait till we get there. All right. The survivors try to escape detection and kill Grant. The townspeople attack their vehicle, capturing Starlet and Jack. Bill and Kylie track Starla to her home and find that the infected are melding into one giant creature, which is a a society reference. If anybody's ever seen Society, that's one fucked up weird movie. Society? Yeah, it's about rich people who, like, prey on poor people. And it was made in the late 70s, early 80s, I want to say. And so, like, at the end of the movie, it's basically like the sexual thing where they all turn into one giant thing with, like, and they like eat the poor people and it, it they turn into this giant creature thing like that and they mold together that's what that was it was like a a society reference society reference that's i've never fucking, seen it. i have to check that it's out it's fucking weird dude is it it well i watched it on amazon so it might still be on there is it like what do you mean kind of like is it like eyes wide shut weird or is it just like no eyes wide shut is tame compared to that really yeah, it's it's fucking weird, dude. Like, have I, you ever seen Eyes Wide Shut? Either of you? Yeah, yeah. That movie is weird. It is weird. It was like Stanley Kubrick's last movie, but I was like, yeah, it's a fucking weird movie. I'd say Society's weirder. Like Texas Chainsaw, like the dinner scene, kind of weird. No. no, no. This this is like like psychological weird, sort of like social disorder weird. Social disorder, but but on a whole other level, because these people are like, I don't know, creepy. Yeah, like they they even like they adopt this one kid who was like a poor kid and they adopt him. And I don't remember the whole level of that cuz I literally when it was over I was like the fuck just happened. Deleted. It, is it like okay, so is it like Clockwork Orange weird? Or, I mean like in the uh, sense that like there's really no there's no I don't think there's a comparison. Or... I don't think there's really a comparison. It's just weird. It's like <clears throat> I mean is there like a protagonist? Yeah, it's, it's the rich. The rich people are like against poor people, like in every sense. No, I'm of the saying word. like, is there like a main person? Yeah, the the the, the kid that they adopted. <clears throat> okay, so he he's like the good guy. He's like he figures out what's well, like. I got gotcha. you. I under, didn't know if it followed the under, character. Yeah, he or. understands that something is wrong, and as I remember, I think he he either stops it or he gets away. I don't remember quite what. I just remember the end scene because I was like. The fuck is going on? It got on? real weird at the end. It got real fucking. It got yeah. like so weird that it was like, oh, I don't want to. I want to delete this from my memory. You're right, like one of those things where like, oh, yeah, I regret watching this now because I'm like, I'm never. It's never going to leave my brain. Yeah. So like at that, like when <laughs> we so, when we were watching, get that off your head. I watched Society after I watched this the first time. So I watched this and then like I watched Society and I never thought about the fact that this was you know because i only saw it's like this that once. human assimilation yeah like, and then i watched this rah. again i watched this Dude, again this so time fucking creepy like like it, it it gave me like the, the thing vibes but in this case like whenever that uh that fat dude like gets down and like starts melding yeah. into the other so bodies like, i'm like as he's going yeah that's like, why it was a society reference because it's like sexual like all these these old Ooh, like, like oh, rich oh. people are like melding together and it's like like a lot of moaning and grunting yeah and you're like huh? i know it's very weird yeah so like when yeah. i was watching it this time i i i thought of society and it is a nod i was like oh, i wish i never saw that movie <laughs> that is weird like i saw that that scene in this movie i'm like there's some gross shit in this it, movie but i think for that that's the most disturbing part. It, it's yeah. from it's from another movie, so yeah. he didn't come up with that. Thank God. Like I, I wouldn't want to be the one to come up. with I've that. seen That's, it before in other weird. movies. Like like I said, it's it's a like if you've seen the thing or the second thing, or if you've seen Color Out of Space. Oh that's yeah, another good yeah. reference there that's where they like yeah the yeah they had the melding and all and the that girl, yeah. the lady yeah. So I mean I wouldn't say don't watch Society because it is kind of a classic. People point it out as like sort mm. of a 
social commentary kind of movie, and I can see that. Um, it's just weird. It's just a weird movie. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, so where was I? Um, uh, and melding into one giant creature, they must risk their lives to stop the infestation from spreading any further. Jack awakens in the house's basement where several of the infected are eating. He tries to escape, becomes in- but becomes infected as well. Starler charms the monster by calling him Grant and telling him that they can be together. But as they get close to each other, she pulls a mirror from her underwear and stabs him in the chest with the pointed handle. It He's- was actually a, a hairbrush. I yeah. thought it was his neck. I thought she stabbed him in the neck. I mean, what was I mean, it? What, what do you consider his neck? I mean, everything is. I mean, he's got a yeah. face. That's about the only thing that yeah. he can really. Yeah. yeah, and it was. It wasn't a mirror. It was a hairbrush. Yeah, it was a. It was a hairbrush. Um, very pointy hairbrush. It was a very pointy hairbrush. I was just hairbrush. reading it as. A, I know. I know. He slaps her with a tentacle and knocks her across the room. Bill arrives. Jack begs to be killed, and Bill shoots him in the head. He tries to kill the monster with a grenade, but another tentacle knocks the grenade into the pool where it detonates. Well, that really simplified that scene. That scene was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. It was hilarious. It knocks Shit. it. Because I think she knocks it out of his hand on accident the first time, doesn't she? No, but, he smacks it out. Like, his tentacle smacks it out t- of his hand. Okay. Like, and then like, he, like, because he done pulled the pin, he's like, Shit. Yeah, and then he gets it. It was like on the couch or something. He gets it, and then it gets knocked out of his hand again, and then lands in the pool, and he just stares. No, it doesn't get knocked sad, out. Of, like, he's got it in his hand again, and then he tosses. He smacks him through the window, and he loses. Oh, he it, drops and it. it. Okay, falls into the pool. Yep, and then he's just sad looking at the pool. Yeah, he's just like, oh shit. Yeah, the monster, <laughs> that was my only plan. <laughs> yeah, that was it. That was all that I was had. There done. was no plan B. The monster sends two tentacles to stab Bill and infect him. One is lodged in his ab- abdomen, but Bill attaches the other two to a small propane tank. F- the other two a small propane tank, filling Grant with gas. And Starla shoots the monster, causing it to explode, whereupon all the infected die. The three survivors walk away to find a hospital for Bill. In a post credit scene, a cat approaches to feed off Grant's remains and is infected. The end. It's funny because, like... Uh... <clears throat> That scene where like uh, he pulls out that thing and she's like, "You gotta have both them thingies in to get all woomy." He's like, "Oh, that's awesome!" Yeah, and then and he pre- like, then he presses on it and it looks like, just, like fucking yeah, yeah. jizz yeah. coming out. That's exactly what I think of every time I see yeah, it. Yeah, he presses like, on it and just he's like, "Well, that's good to know." And it's like all this jizz coming yeah, out. I'm, I'm like, like, I was like, I'm thinking like that's infected. <laughs> like yeah. that's gonna be infected. <laughs> yeah, that's gross. She, gross. Did, she didn't die by the couch. That threw me off. I was expecting her to die. Like when she, the heat oh yeah, when he, I mean, like that hurt for sure. But I, I don't think, I it, like, yeah, I didn't think did. she was gonna get killed. But like, it hurt for sure. Um, yeah. So like the first one of the first notes I took was like, next time I go to do karaoke, I want to see a lady doing karaoke like she was, like hands oh, as tight as possible around so the mic, bad. and like. I know all there's to know about the crowd. Like, like, am I wrong? I want to see that in uh, person. I do too. I that was hilarious. I I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm in agreement with this. I agree. I, I laughed so hard watching that lady. Yeah. Just like she's just if I dead go to a bar, if I walk into a bar, there's like four people in there, and then one lady on stage singing like that. I'm like, oh, this is our bar. Yeah. This is totally her our hand, bar. Her knuckles were almost white holding that yeah. mic. She, and she's a deadpan. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's the bar you're like, you call yeah, all your friends like, the, hey, meet we, me at this place. Word owls. Yeah. Get here quick. Get here fast. <laughs> I walk in. And Best be like, Tuesday ever. <laughs> you call me down here for this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, if you guys were like egging her all, you go, girl. Like, oh, going, I would. I would. Nuts. I'd be like, dude, probably, do another. <laughs> we love you. I'd be pulling out one dollar bills. Yes, more please. More please. Have all my money, dude. That was be- that was the You're best. You're gonna thing. be a TikTok sensation. Oh my god, <laughs> that was the best thing. Uh, yeah, I agree. It was pretty <laughs> awesome. Um, so, man, I don't, I don't even know, man. I don't even know where to start with this fucking movie. So, there's a lot of parts in this movie that's like, uh, they're Easter eggs for other movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and. This yeah, like this is one of the first things. Like, because I remember whenever James Gunn did this, but I was obsessed with this movie whenever it came out because it was just one there's of those so movies. Like, there's Easter a lot of nods and, yeah. and like, and I was like hardcore into horror movies at the time. And then like, well, we on, can go through the the nods if you'd like. I put I put them in here. Yeah, let's see, let's see let's hear some of the nods. Like, because so, I think that it's a big. This one was a big for me because like I know I 
noticed this just because I'm a huge fan of like the thing. Yeah. And, you know, things like that. But in the opening scene, as they pan down the street, you can see R.J. McCready's funeral home. R.J. McCready was Kurt Russell's character in the thing. Yep. Uh, Jack McCready, the mayor of Wheelsey, is named after Kurt Russell's character, characters Jack Burton and R.J. McCready from John Carpenter's films Big Trouble in Little China and The Thing. The scene of Kylie getting attacked by a slug in the bathtub is a reference to a key scene in Dave Cronenberg's 1975 horror Shivers, a film about humans being taken over by parasite alien worms. Director James Gunn is on record as saying Shivers was a major influence on this movie. It is also a nod to A Nightmare on Elm Street when Freddy's bladed glove emerges between the legs of his sleeping Nancy while she's taking a bath. The name of the high school... It was like almost like... Some of it was almost seen for like that part where it's showing her face like and you're at the yeah at the water eye level. view yeah, yeah the yeah. eye view of the water mm-hmm. like that was very much nightmare on the street oh yeah yeah uh, the name of the high school is earl bassett high after a character in tremor tremors which would be what uh for uh shit ward ward's his last name ward mm-hmm. what do you mean? oh uh fred the one ward. that's yeah fred, fred ward. ward thank yeah. you Dangled above the street. He passed away, didn't he? Yeah. He just recently passed away, or? I think so. Yeah, I looked at it. I don't remember. Dangled above the street at the beginning of the film and on stage later at the Deer Cheer celebration, you can see a Hen and Lauder's Saddle Lodge presents Deer Cheer sign, a reference to cult horror writer and director Frank Hen and Lauder, famed director of Basket Case and Brain Damage. He died in 2022. That's what I thought. Two shout outs to Predator when. The slimy alien is about to shoot the parasite at Grant Grant. It emits the same clicking noise the Yaucha makes. Is that what they call him? That's it says Y A U T J A Yaucha. I didn't know they had a name for the Neither did I. That's what it says. That's so weird. When parties I'm gonna have to look that up. I didn't know that. Now I did hear this and I mentioned it to Jeremiah, but I don't know if anybody you've noticed, but when parties group gears up at the police station, the score of the film becomes suspiciously similar to Alan Silvestri's iconic theme, Predator. When they're getting the guns and stuff like that. It sounded just Uh, like Let me think, let me think, let me think. Uh, I think you're right. I think I remember hearing that. Yeah, it sounded just like it's it. got that is from the original from the first Predator Mm -hmm. that uh Yeah, the first. Yeah. Yeah. A shout out to the blob. A, but that's like one of the best. Like it's an iconic score. Too. Oh, it is. People don't realize it. But whenever you hear it, you're like, oh, shit. Whenever yeah, I heard that before. Yeah. Well, like, I, I'm always like, it was, Predator. <laughs> it was playing and we were sitting there like, you getting Predator vibes? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, shout out to the blob. Alien Menace arrives through a meteorite and starts its evasion in a small town. Uh, and the last one I have is the scene where Grant and Brenda find the alien egg in the forest, and then it opens up and shoots out its projectile tendrils into Grant is yeah. a nod to the John Hurt face hugger scene in Alien. That's the major ones, anyway. I laughed at how she, when uh, she first got inseminated by the, all the eggs, like she's just like flailing around on the, ca- on the couch. Yeah. The way she was flailing, she's like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> like, she to, like she was laying on the couch listening to a really good pop song. Yeah. <laughs> like she's trying yeah, to get it out. Yeah. <laughs> Hit me, baby, one more time. <laughs> That she had a rave on in her own head. Yeah. But she was like, she was doing, she was like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> like she was listening to some like mumble rap or some shit. <laughs> uh. James Gunn did break the golden rule, though. What? The dog never dies. Yep. There's there a, lot a lot of, dogs of dead dogs dog. in this one. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of Imagine dead dogs. Imagine how bad yeah. that, ba- that basement stuck. Oh. oh I yeah, don't know how the hell so, you didn't smell it anyway. Right? I didn't understand that, though, because, like, okay, her, her basement smells like death, right? But she walks it's down into it dark death. and waits till she gets to the bottom to turn on the light. Like, she there, had yeah, a light there was a switch. light switch at the top of the yeah. stairs. Yeah. Like, she goes, she starts to walk down. I'm like, yeah. turn on the oh, light. I'm like, she's going to turn on that light, right? No, she just walks down there. I'm like, why wouldn't you turn on the light? Like, yeah. And you know it stank. Like, yeah. you know she gets smelled at the top of the steps. Like, why yeah. wouldn't you turn on the fucking light? Yeah, at I the mean, top it, of the steps. If you would have, like, <laughs> yeah. had the door sealed, and, like, there's no way for the the smell to get up through the house. As soon as you would open that door, this smell would fucking hit you. Well, yeah, she like went a like this. Brick house. Yeah, she's she like, went like Ugh. This. I'm like, Ugh. Ugh. like, there's a bunch of dead animals. She's like, open that door. <laughs> oh, and if you know, if you smell that, like, why wouldn't you just call the cops right away? Yeah, 
Yeah, you know it's de- you, it's de- something's decomposing down. There. Yeah, and for and for Grant and that one chick, the best practice when you find like an egg in the woods is just to go the don't other walk direction. with it. Yeah, walk I would. Away. Why would you walk near that thing? Mm-mm. I see something. Like I would that. be, I'm like, like, Ooh, be like, "Ooh, what's oh, that? Let's what's, poke what's it with that? a stick." Let me just put my put my face right real right yeah. up on it. Like, no, I'd be like, "We need to get away from that." I don't know what that is. Mm-mm. That I think it looks sketchy as fuck. <laughs> you know, honestly, that parasite would have been better off by sticking an animal more than a human, because then it could have just ran ran wild in the woods for the I longest think, time. I think the reason why a human would be a better option is because it has a larger brain capacity. So, like, they're smarter. Humans are smarter. They're not so animalistic, so they can think and and feel and, you know what I mean? Like, whereas, like, and that their resources are better. So, like, if you took, say, it took over a deer, what's it going to do? If it takes over, it a might deer, be limited by the brain capacity. It's going to be very li- not only by, but it also might, if it's, it might leap everywhere, but also by by its resources. So, yeah. like a human, I mean, it doesn't know that obviously, but like right. a deer, what can it do? It's it would have infected yeah. whatever came along, but it just so happened that it was a human. Pro- but in in this case, it would uh, it's the best option. Sure. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? It got very lucky. <laughs> wait, wait, what was that deer disease that we were having too not too long ago? Oh, it was like zombie deer, whatever yeah. the hell it was. Oh shit. They call it zombie deer? <laughs> yeah, it was a it was a uh, nickname for it, but essentially it was like a virus that deer were getting, and there was like a whole thing about like don't deer. eat deer and don't eat deer meat and all this stuff because like it was like the infected. Yeah, it was infected. Um, they were call that shit zombie deer, dude. They like, weren't dead, but like they were. Um, it was like it was. I don't know. I can't remember. They were just they calling were it zombie deer. Right. Yeah, they weren't. I could have went right. a whole was, lifetime without you guys telling me about that. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was. A few I don't years hear nothing about no zombie deer. It was dude. a few years yeah, ago. You didn't hear about it. Ago. No, I don't remember. It was a huge was thing. A, well, it it kind of pops up every deer season. I remember oh, swine flu. I remember that shit. Well, that's why I don't eat deer anyway. Yeah. Well, it's you can tell like if it's been affected. The, the meat shows if it's been affected by it. Like has like some sort of like green. Green. Why Green would zombies, eat? deer. Yeah. Come on. Well, you look can it see up. it on their, on them too. Like, yeah, look it up. I, I'm, I'm not saying you guys are wrong. I'm just saying why thing. though. Why do they call it zombie deer? It's something, something to do with the way they act. Yeah. It's so weird. They weren't acting like a deer. They were, like a I deer. Mean, they, they were acting really. They weren't strange. frolicking. They were like, mm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I eat your brain. They were like hitting their heads against shit and fucking like, zombie yeah. baby over here. You know? yeah. Um, when she did find the you know, the dead, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't deer jerky. <laughs> Not at the moment. <laughs> um, when she did find all those dead things and stuff in the basement, like, and she runs upstairs and the first thing she does is grab the phone. I was a little annoyed by that. Like, if I go downstairs and I find things like that in my basement and it's like the nine or well 2006 and it, and like i don't have a cell phone or whatever and i'm expecting my husband home i'm gonna go to my neighbor's house or something like i'm not gonna but i think in this case she was trying to get the police there as quick as possible i guess i just this, I'm not the thing about this house. is is whenever they're outside safe there whenever they're outside you can obviously tell that they live in a neighborhood it's not like they live out in the country right that's what i'm saying so. i wouldn't feel safe there i wouldn't feel safe in that house because right. i shared it with him like leave. he he has right. just as much right to that house as i do i'm not safe there but then I'm again if she would have went outside he would have caught up to her anyway so yeah it was like but i guess like i'm saying like in this case she was more in danger inside the house and she didn't know that she was in just as much danger going outside you know what i'm saying right she was in more danger in the house i guess i don't know that's just me and then the relationship between starling and grant it seemed like in the beginning they were like trying to, to set it up like she married him for his money but she genuinely she loved had, him. It seemed like she did. Like that was the thing too. Was like everybody made it seem like you know she's gonna be like. But I think they had to humanize her character too because if they would have made her seem like a uh, like this money, it just seemed weird. Know, like why throw that in there? Why put that? As because a, I think that's how they all saw her. But at the same time, she, I get why they see. You know that. what? That's seems, a good point. That's but, a really good point. She so, seems like the type of woman that would just about do anything for someone to settle down with her. Well, she seemed like a woman who was like, I think, because what it seemed like was she was falling, you know what I mean? Like you could tell like she didn't care that much, but then it was like, she felt bad for turning him down. And then I think that revitalized their relationship and the way he was acting at first there. And, and I think that she was like, Oh man, you know, this is great. This is a, you know, 
I am married to this man. I did take these vows and, you know, and I need to keep him happy because, you know, it was just as a classic. It's a classic wife trope is all it is. Yeah. So I don't it know. Just, it just seemed like she genuinely loved him. That's what it seemed and, like. And yeah. Yeah. She cared about him. She didn't want anything to happen. I to just, him. I guess, the first time I watched it, and again, I was kind of struck by it. It was like they set her up, like you know, this money hungry bitch or whatever. And then, like you know, I'm watching it. And I'm like, but she isn't. She genuinely loves him. Like I don't get this. Yeah, and they could have just as easily wrote her as like one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Type of like money, but I, I don't think. That but, you, it, but you I don't think have anybody would have bought into Elizabeth well, that, like that at all. Well, not only that, but also that kind of character wouldn't be very. I wouldn't say believable, but like. That kind of character you couldn't you couldn't uh, get behind or yeah, uh, yeah. like like they wanted her think, to be more like yeah and I don't think that the movie would have worked as well if no he threw, definitely not yeah like no. I said I just from what I got from her character at the beginning it was like she was just the type of woman that the first person to give her attention was like the person she was going to end up being with you know what I mean well and in that's that what town like Grant seemed like the guy that would be in that town he really was probably the best option for her. Yeah. I mean, because obviously Sheriff Dude wasn't going to make a move. So. Yeah. What's uh, up, Nate? Yeah. You're on it. <laughs> and you know, this part, I love this part. So the part when they're in the field and she's trying to get like Grant to go back with them. And like, so he starts to like leave or whatever. And he like pulls the tentacle up and he like flips it and like cuts that dude in half. That was amazing. Oh, that Partially. Was cool. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, he's like. Well, he was li- he like, was alive just long enough to go. Oh, I'm fucking dead. Oh shit! <laughs> you know, because he just like f- split in half. That was that was baller. That was pretty sweet. That was baller. Yeah. As I liked well. it. It was not all the way in half. It was like parsley in half. Yeah, like yeah. just the back. He like part. turned him into a giant walking vagina. <laughs> yeah, it's like a taco. Yeah, taco. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, or like you know how you like sometimes you cut your hot dog down the center to get the inside go cooked too. Yeah, that's what he looked like. I was really surprised, too, when the worms showed up, like when she split apart or whatever, and like the worms showed up, and there was like thousands of them, and they were all inside the barn or whatever, and then they cleared out, and then you see the mayor show up, and he's fine. I'm like, how does a loudmouth motherfucker like that keep his mouth shut long enough like, to not tried get, to get my. I like what he said. They tried to get in my mouth. What kind of what kind of animal wants you to eat it? <laughs> yeah, but I was just thinking, how does a loud mouth fucker like that keep his mouth shut long enough for one of those not to get in there? What kills me is like, is the mouth the only w- entrance? That's what I'll say. Is like, no, they didn't try the rectum. They didn't try the <laughs> yeah. rectum. And like a woman, she's got three holes to go into. It's like that's what I was thinking. Like the girl in the tub. Maybe they I'm like, get, maybe they can't get through clothes. Well, the girl in the tub. Yeah. She was naked. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. they, they could have chose any hole they wanted. Maybe James Gunn wasn't ready to go there yet. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, that's a little. <laughs> he's push. he's not Cronenbergian yeah. enough yet. That's pushing it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Like, that, not, you're getting into, like, X-rated territory here. Yeah. So, like, how come in movies like this, it always kills me, especially they were showing that farmhouse and all these windows and stuff are open. Nobody has screens in movies. That's true. The yeah. windows why, are just why open. You, why would you have screens? And you know, there's a, it's South Carolina. You know, they got a lot of bugs and mosquitoes and yeah. shit. Like, uh, uh-uh. uh. No, I got screens yeah. all over my fucking house. Yeah, same here. I, I don't open Ohio. my windows. Yeah. I don't open my window unless there's a screen in it. Nope. And then, like, my favorite, one of my favorite parts was the twin or the two little girls after they get infected. Yeah. And the- they were talking about whatever, and they walk up, and he's like, he doesn't know they're infected or whatever. And they're like, we're itchy. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, like poison, poison ivy, ivy yeah, out yeah. back, maybe. Yeah, poison ivy. We're itchy. Yeah, we're itchy. <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. I couldn't remember what they said it was, and he, and they just like, we're itchy. <laughs> yeah, and, or the part where they're like at the truck with whenever the girls in the truck, and they're, <laughs> she's like, and she says something, and it was very, very uh, Night of the Living Dead. Mm-hmm. The way that the little girl had said it. Like just come out and play. Yeah, she's like she says something, and it's very, it very much reminds me of 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 uh, uh, they're coming to get you, Bob. Yeah, come like get it, you, it, it kind of reminded me of that, which I'm sure that's what he was going for. Yeah, probably. I'm sure. You know what I mean? If you but, if you if you get any vibe it's in this most movie, likely, it's probably yeah. from whatever yeah. you're getting. But the this vibe movie, from. this is like I think this was like one of James Gunn's first movies that he directed. I'm almost uh, sure. yeah, I think it is, and. So, because th- this really put him on my radar mm-hmm. back in 06. And because I was like really, really into hard, like hardcore into horror movies. And back then, that was whenever you were starting to get really stale. 
with yeah. horror movies. Yeah, absolutely. I think the best two movies that had come out um, that year was probably this and The Descent. Yes, the and those were like really two movies good. that were like I was like, dude, dude, we have that in the box. Uh, I think we do. I'm not sure. We should. Um, but like those movies, those oh, are two movies like back in '06 <laughs> that I was like, man, you these don't are... want to watch that again. The Descent. Oh man, it's so good though. I love The Descent. Um, but I understand. Right, it's very I'm claustrophobic. My, my that's probably that's yeah. probably where like a huge part of my closest trivia comes from is watching that fucking movie, or maybe I didn't realize I had it until I watched that movie because I'm maybe. watching that movie going, ah, oh, no. There's uh-uh. some areas I'm like, eh, I don't think I would do that. Like, you I gotta wouldn't. be very, I don't know. That's like that's like being like, I don't know. It's not in the box. My claustrophobia the box. is up there with the same thing as like my paranormal shit. Like, yeah. Hmm. Anyway, uh. You guys done with you guys? Yeah, I got all, I got all my notes. Okay, uh, you guys want to get into rating this motherfucker? Let's do it. Let's rock out, bitch. Okay, so Madison did message me back, so we're gonna go ahead and give her a call. Um, okay, she did watch the movie last night, so good on her. Ugh, stretch it out. Get ready to blow shit up today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get for America, for America, and for my entertainment. <laughs> Back up, you goddamn! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Well, I was reading, waiting for you to call, so. Cool. You got your review? Yeah, I got my review. What were you reading? It's in my head. What? What were you reading? A book? No, well, no shit, a book. It was a Goosebumps book. A Goosebumps? That's funny that she's reading a Goosebumps book because the little girl in the movie Both was of reading them. a book. Oh, yeah, they were reading Goosebumps books. That's funny. Uh, all right. Huh? I found it in the closet. You found it in the closet? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe put that book back. That sounds a little sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. It's just a... Anyway, you got your review? That's how most Goosebumps books start. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, they find it in a clo- in like a dark closet or something. This was in Mom's stuff. <laughs> Whenever she was a child or in the attic. It was in Ada's closet. It was my old Goosebumps book. Oh. Well, that's less I used fun. to have a bunch of them. Oh. All right. Well, anyway, you got your review for this movie? Yeah, I do. All right, let's let's hear it. I actually really like this movie. Yeah, this how about weird. you speak up a little bit? I said I actually really like this movie, which is weird. I don't know why it's weird. It was a horror comedy. I like horror comedies. <laughs> I think they're funny. I like scary movie. I like scary movie too. Well, what was your favorite quote in the movie? My favorite quote. Yeah, there's a lot of. It's a very quotable movie. I didn't know that was a quote. <laughs> you didn't hear that one? It is, it is now. Some words of text. You don't, do you not remember any of the quotes? Not really. <laughs> We're itchy. <laughs> We're itchy. Uh, all right, well, uh, give us give us a rundown here. Um, well, I, I liked the comedy in it, and I think it was placed right, I guess. Like, there is a horror aspect to it, but it made me want to laugh all the time. I don't know why. I was in a very laughable mood last night, which helped a lot. Um, she had more of those lifesavers. I, did you eat some of them lifesavers? I had a lot of those lifesavers. Oh, that's why she was laughing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, and the big monster thing, I don't even know what to call it. Like Grant? Grant Grant. Yeah. Grant Grant. The goop. Yeah. <laughs> Ada looked over my shoulder. She said, Is that a penis? <laughs> uh, I was like, what? No. Gross. That's the ugliest <laughs> penis ever. I was gonna oh say. I started dying. Um, but I definitely rate this movie like seven and a half or an eight i don't even know because i don't want to rate it an eight because i feel like that's too high but i don't want to rate it a seven and a half because i feel like it's too low 7.75 
Do we do that? Sure, no, yeah. we don't do that. But <laughs> one or the other, seven, five, or eight. I'll just give it an eight. Okay, eight yeah. it is. I really like that movie, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really good movie. All right, well, uh, you having fun then? Yeah. You guys gonna blow I'm shit sure. up later? Probably not. I what? don't know what we're doing. Well, but we're we're gonna blow shit up later. Nobody's even awake. I think Ethan's awake, and Mom's awake. But I think she's waiting for everybody else to be awake. Ah. Oh. All right. Well, we'll let you go. All right. All right. We love you. Have fun. Love you. Have fun. Happy Fourth of July. Happy Fourth. All right. Love you. Love you too. Bye. All right. <laughs> All right. Madison gave her an eight. She Eric, did. what do you give it, man? Uh, I like some of the comic points in it. Um, dialogue was okay. I liked some of the dialogue in it. Um, some of the acting, like Starla, for me, when it first started off, Starla just did not hit like her acting. It was it just threw me off. At the beginning, just she was just very. How do I put it? This just a wore down kind of submissive kind of person. And uh, yeah, that's what she was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I I don't know, just something about exactly what she was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get it. Like her acting might have been. I wouldn't say stale. Yeah, well, like it, she was just kind of like a stale. I think she came person. into her own later, yeah. later as, as things, movie, yeah. you know. But I think that she, at the beginning she was very much just Grant's wife. Yeah, yeah, that's all she was. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that part where she stuck that thing through that dude's neck or whatever was like the beginning of her, like whatever he's like, bitch is hardcore. Like I yeah. think that was her, you know, you Branching know, really coming, yeah, coming out of her shell there. Or um, it was like, I think that was, like, I think that was kind of the point is you're supposed to see her reemerge or. It was like Come a rebirth of, of yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I think that's character. you're supposed to. Mm-hmm. I gave it, I'm going to say a seven. I gave it a seven. Okay. A seven. It's more than I thought I'd give it, but it's, it's a solid seven to me. Okay. Karen? So, um, for me, the thing about this movie that um, I love is, first of all, um, all the nods. I think that if you do that right, you're doing a really good job. I think that it, it, whenever they give shout outs like that that's somebody who respects the genre yeah and that's what i say is so. like i think it's an endearing quality mm-hmm. in a director to take what another um, movie maker has done and say like i really like what I you really did. like what you did so i'm gonna put it in my movie in give a, a respectful way yeah i'm gonna give you a shout out yeah i really like i, I really like when it um when another filmmaker does that yeah. for uh for another filmmaker and then um <clears throat> and especially when they don't copy it you yeah. know, they just they just say, "Hey, I like what you did." They give him a little nod. Yeah, that's what it is. I love like, it. You know, I love that. Like like putting the Jack McCready stuff. In yeah, the thing, yeah, you love know that. I mean? the thing and, references and, and not in your face either. Exactly. You know, like those the, are subtle, the whole, hint, the subtle whole... little things that you're like, "Oh, look at that." You yeah, know? like if you if you blink and miss it, yeah. you know, like the um the R. J. McCready uh, funeral home thing. Yeah. I didn't see that the first time. This time I was like, "Did that say R. J. McCready?" Yeah. I you know like, did that? Yeah. Did I did I miss that? Yeah. Um. And then the comedic timing in this movie is perfect. Oh, and my sure. the the lines, the way they de- they're delivered, um, and the blink if you miss it stuff. I love that because it means that the movie is highly rewatchable. You can watch this movie a few you know over and over again, as long as you're not watching it every day or anything. But like you can watch it a, a few times and and every time it's going to be enjoyable. Right. So the rewatchability is a is a good factor. Um, the fact that that Grant can be this gross thing, you know, and gross me out because I don't get grossed out. There's, there's, you know, like these things that happen in this movie that you're kind of like, Ugh, gross. <laughs> you know, and I don't get grossed out about it, like anything. And that that's a thing for me, I think, too. Um, and uh, of course, Nathan Fillion's amazing. Um, yeah. And I, you know. One thing I I kind of hate is when you know you see people like like James Gunn now he's known for like his 
his action movies and stuff, and I kind of hate that, you know, kind of like um, the guy that did. he was a great director before. Yeah, and people are like, oh, James Gunn this, James Gunn that. It's like, you know, he did, like, Slither, He right? did Slither. Yeah. Uh, he did Super. He did uh, yeah. Brightburn. Yeah, Brightburn, um, yeah. So, like, he was a great director before Guardians mm-hmm. and all that. Like, yeah, or, like, um, the guy that did Lord of the Rings, you know, people are like, oh, yeah. Peter Jackson. Yeah, Peter yeah. Jackson, like, yeah. oh, yeah, Peter Jackson did Lord of the Rings. So, you know, he did um, other things before Yeah, that, he did... You know? um, People Dead Alive. Dead Alive. And he also did another movie, a zombie movie, another zombie movie from. I kick ass for the Lord. That's like my favorite. Yeah. Line for ever. I think it was from New Zealand, actually. And yeah. And most of the. Yeah. And then. Um, wait, did he do. He didn't do uh, Housebound, did he? I, think I, think, he did. I think he called, did a movie called Undead. Maybe. And it was like where aliens came down and saved the day. It was such Maybe. a weird ending. But I was like. But it was still a cool movie, or like yeah. it was weird. Yeah, anyway, just, they're, I just hate it when people are always like associating it with their big blockbusters yeah, and stuff. It's yeah. just it's annoying. To I me. get that that's what makes a director famous, but you got to look at their past. Where there's a reason why somebody said, "Hey, let's get this guy to direct this big franchise movie." It's because they've done things in the past that mm-hmm. really stand out caught to the eyes. Yeah, the caught producers. the eyes of somebody. And, and for me, this is this is the stuff that makes him an artist, yeah. in my opinion. But this, well, they have especially this and Super. Their, their, yeah. Like, this and Super are, like, two movies that I'm like, he really, really shines. God, and, I really love Brightburn, though. And Brightburn, yeah. Even God, Well, Brightburn was kind of... It's, that a, was it's a more serious... Well, but, that is post-Guardians. Like, he did Guardians yeah, of the Galaxy. Yeah, that's true. That's well, true. Like I said, I mean, in, in, in certain aspects, it, these kind of movies leave the directors with more free range for their artists to artistic abilities yes. other than like their name brand movies your producers kind of yes. come in and say hey you can't shouldn't be doing this hey you shouldn't do that yeah, yeah. you know so and, but like yeah what with brightburn dude it was it was like one of those movies that like it was still very much it's not a big i mean it was a blockbuster i guess it was a it was a triple a it was i guess you could say it was a big a title, I, I don't know, man, but like it. I don't still, think a lot of people liked it though, just because it was like it was a pair. It was it was essentially a what if Superman wasn't a good guy? Yeah, and most people if, didn't like that. Yeah, and I'm know? like, dude, but what if he that, wasn't though? I like, like that you if know? you ask that. I like when you ask that question. Though. Yeah, I like those questions being yeah. asked because yeah, this is exactly what would happen. He would rampage through the planet. And I really liked Elizabeth Banks in that movie too. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. she raised this this kid, you know, and mm-hmm. then it's like she had to kind of try to take it out, you know, like exactly, that's that's yeah. rough. Yeah. Anyway, now we're getting off topic. Yet. So, um, you haven't seen Brightburn? Oh, I yeah. definitely oh, recommend watching. It. I, I own it. I'll yeah. let you borrow it. It's amazing. I recommend it. Um, anyway, so I would give it like an eight point five, but I do have to take some points off for the 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 CGI, like because I do think that they could have done better. Would um, you give it? I would have given it like an eight point five, oh, okay. but I'm gonna give it an eight. Yeah, so dang it. It. yeah I'm, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with yeah so I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with Madison give it an eight just because I think that everything else about it was amazing. There's just you know the CGI. I, think I guess been there better. is no excuse for poor CGI, but I don't know if it was a budgetary problem. I think it probably it, but... was, and I'm sure that there's good reason for it. But like, it, it it's a solid movie otherwise. Right. So yeah, think, I'll, I'll give it an eight. It's think... kind of like Blade. Yeah. CGI killer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh I think for me, uh there's a lot of things to love. I've loved this movie since the day it came out. Um I've been I've seen it quite a few times. And it never I think watching it this time, even still, I'm like, this movie's amazing. I love all the lines, I love all the acting, I love everybody in the movie, even like Michael Rooker, Nathan Fillion, and Elizabeth Banks, they all fucking kill it. Um I I, I I, I'm not going to be too hard on it for the CG because, like I said, it could be a budgetary thing. Um, I'm not really sure, but because also the practical effects really make up for it. That's true. Opinion. Yeah, that's true. So, like Michael Rooker's like makeup and everything like that, uh, like his teeth and all that, it looks so good, man. I can't, I can't ding it. I'm not going to ding it for the CG just because the practical effects Could look you so good. Imagine how hot it would have been in being oh, like in that and suit I think, with him like in that living room area. I'm pretty like, sure that like they said that like he he was pretty miserable in the thing but he was oh, like he was a champ. Oh, I'm sure so he was. I, I He's I'm a pretty sure that's professional. Right uh, yeah, Michael Rooker's a professional in general. He's just a good actor. How big of that suit that could have been? They could have put an air conditioner in there. Yeah, no shit, just something to blow some air up Fuck in there yeah. for him. Um, but for me, I think like with the one liners, it's funny. Like you're right, the comedy lands, dude. Like mm-hmm. he, they, it's so well timed. Um, 
just all the nods, everything. I've loved this movie since day one. I'm definitely going to give it. It's got to have an 8.5 for me. So it would be a nine if like it's almost a nine for me. And I'm like, no, because this is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. So I love this fucking movie and I've always loved it. And I, this is one of those things that made me love Nathan Fillion more. So yeah. Like he's, I've always loved him since this movie. He's always been a great actor and everything. Yeah. I've seen. He's always been like, he's always had that great comedic timing. Yeah. And, and he's just a funny dude. And I hear he's a big, tender sweetheart, too. Yeah. You know? That's the thing that I loved about this movie is that everybody's comedic timing is perfect. And even Not after him, all like these years, everybody. him and James Gunn still have a great friendship. Mm -hmm. It's almost like kind of how Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell are still friends to this day. Mm -hmm. It's like that kind of relationship. Like, yeah. So, so that brings the aggregate to 7.9. That's good. That's yeah. hot. That's solid. Yep. You know. Anyway, let's get into uh, some Rotten Tomatoes stuff, huh? Do it. Rotten Tomatoes. Tomatoes. Uh, oh, man. I'm still trying to wake up. Critics. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, when am I going to wake up? Like Critics, I'm giving 75. Uh, critics? Uh, mm, no, I don't think they liked it. I'm going to go 58. You don't think they liked it? Mm-mm. Kirks are assholes. They can be, but this is James Gunn. Just saying. It's early James Gunn. Yeah, I guess. All right, 62. 62, what'd you say? 75. Eric's going to take it. Oh, 87%. Really? Uh, certified fresh. Really? Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 92 right. for audience. Oh, yeah, it's going to be, uh, I'm going to say 87. 92. Uh, Karen's going to take this one. Actually, 63%. Oh, yeah. The audience, the audience didn't like it as much. The audience, audience sucks. Well, it's I mean, you know. I'm, well, they they know James Gunn for own, his, right. his his no. The audience knows him for the Marvel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The so that's what a lot of people are going to go. Oh, James Gunn, let's watch it. And yeah, they're going to be like, like, Oh, is this, this isn't. Yeah, yeah this, this is isn't bullshit. James Gunn. This isn't Guardians. Mm -hmm. uh, critics consensus: a slimy uh, B movie homage homage oozing with affection. Or for low budget horror films, Slither is creepy and funny if you've got the stomach for it. So, see, this is one of those things that the critics loved James Gunn, so that's why he got into the Marvel stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's Bam. Point. So, the lady who played, um, so her name's Brenda James in the, in the, in real life, but in the movie, her name is Brenda also. What is, I've seen her in something before. What is she in? Mm, I don't know. Let me, look it up. let me. I'm looking right now. Uh, so I'm trying to look at. She's in Masters of Horror. That's probably it. Dark Angel, Weird Science, The Show. These are all shows. Facts of Life, maybe a movie. Red Rover, Incredible. Now the Barber. Nice guys sleep alone, safe. Yeah, I don't know. I, maybe I just think I've seen. I it bet before. it's. I bet it's Masters of Horror. Do you know how many people I see, and I go, like I know them, but I can't tell where I know them from. It's she probably... just. She looked like uh, the lady from one of those cop shows, but I guess it's not her. Oh, you're probably talking. Of, you're probably thinking of um, Marge Helden Heldenberger. Yeah, the she kind of looks lady, like her. Lady, she kind of yeah. looks like her. Yeah. Okay, anyway, I'm going to give you guys some two, or well, some some poor reviews here from the audience, because they're, sometimes they're kind of Paul Rudd wasn't in this. Paul Rudd was not in this. He definitely could have, would have fit right in, though. He would have. He should have been Paul Rudd's, like, cop, uh. He should have been. Uh, his partner. No, not the mayor. Mayor no. did a good job. Uh, could have been his partner. That would have kind of He fun. could have easily played Nathan Fillion's character. Brother. Yeah, well, his character. Even. Yeah, he could have. Yeah, but I wouldn't want to replace Nathan. No. There's a one star. At least the makeup was okay. Watch the blob and Dead Alive instead. Or just or watch all of them. It doesn't matter. Like right. uh one and a half stars. Absolutely waste of time. James Gunn has come a long way from this. Why are you judging him for what he has or has not that's, done? That's right there is a Marvel fan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's somebody who watched this movie. Oh, it's James Gunn. It was like, what the hell is this? So one we star. like we like mindless garb. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, right. Uh, one star. Don't get me wrong. The Guardians movies are great. I Yeah, but I'm not trying like, to be a jerk. I, like I just... The especially movies. the first one. But like, Yeah, I'm just over it. I'm over it, too. Uh, one star. You may, <clears throat> you may need to put your brain out to watch this movie. This is worst illogical 
biggest failure of creature attacking movie. What the fuck? Do you know? Do you not know English? Yeah. <laughs> they label. <laughs> well, I this say movie many as, word when one word do yeah, trick. This they label this movie as horror sci fi. Have they ever seen a horror movie? This this movie is worse than getting kicked in ball on ball. Kicked on ball. That's what it says. <laughs> <laughs> kicked on ball. Uh, an Asian guy. It sounds like an Asian name. Kicked on ball. <laughs> Uh, so I gave two I stars. Good luck, everybody. Oh, wait, it says I gave two stars <laughs> only for graphics and special effects. Do not waste your time, or do not waste your data and time. Data. And you didn't give it two stars. You gave it one, dickhead. <laughs> maybe you thought about it right before you hit the. the no, star. maybe only one star. But you already typed it. Yeah, but I don't feel like erasing it. Jesus. Uh, this one just is a half star. It says stupid and disgusting. The disgusting part. He, he, Oh, but I like what this guy said. This it. guy gave it uh, five Ooh. stars and said, one of the greatest horror comedies of all time. See, so just be a fan, man. Uh, one star. I know you are not supposed to take this seriously, but I can't help calling this a piece of shit. Why, though? Yeah. You can't just do that. You have to give a reason. Two stars. Barely a two. Too stupid for a real horror movie. If you're going for campy, hire some decent joke gag writers. Okay, if you're going for campy too much. A little bit. A little There's bit. a little because he, he's doing there. he's doing the B rated. Yeah, homage. he's definitely he's, yeah. yeah. One star. I didn't care for this. The humor didn't land. It's just a yes, very it gross film. It, the humor was the fucking best part of the whole movie. Um, half star. Horrible, disgusting movie. Why would anyone think that this is worth seeing? I thought I think it's worth seeing. I've seen it several times. I need to watch it more. Yeah, I want to watch it more just to piss you off. (laughs) I watched it again. Here's a half star, and he actually seems like he wrote a little bit here. Half star. I don't know how to say this. This doesn't happen often. I'm actually very, very. Very rarely disgusted by anything. This movie just makes me feel sick, literally. I'm glad. Well, that's the point. <clears throat> Believe me, I love The Walking Dead. This has... Okay. It's supposed <laughs> to be about a Walking Dead. Yeah. yeah. The thing, though, about people eating till they burst and worms coming out of them just made me want to vomit. Aside from that, uh, I guess it's okay. Just the fact, just that fact, which is really central to the movie, just ruined it for me. For one, that is the fucking point of this movie. It is supposed to be gross. And for two, you said, aside from that, I guess it's okay. But you still only gave it a half a star. And okay would say two, two and a half stars. So you you knocked it for <clears throat> one scene in the movie. You knocked it a whole. Well, I'm saying like the whole. You're missing the whole point of this movie. Like you're you're saying it literally made you sick. That's what they're going for. They want you to throw up. Like if we can make people throw up, we've succeeded Mm -hmm. because we want this to be gross. Mm -hmm. It hits your feels some point. Yeah, if I threw up during a movie, I would be like, dude, that movie. Don't watch it unless you want to get sick. And I'm, you know what I mean. Like, but if it can do that for me. Then why wouldn't I be like, yeah, you it, know, if it can affect your emotions yeah. from a film, it, they're obviously doing something. Right. If a film is going for something and they succeed at it, I'm going to I'm going to give them a rate, a good rating. Like, yeah, you did what you were trying to do. One of the biggest reasons that I always tell people that they should watch the um, the show that Mike Flanagan did, the um, um, Haunting of Hill House. Why I tell people they should watch that show is because it's the only movie, the only TV show in my life. That has ever made me jump. Hmm. One time. One time. But it still did it. It succeeded. The only thing. The only thing that's ever made me jump. Hmm. Uh, Here's a one star. I'm sorry for this movie. I'm sorry this movie was disgusting. Couldn't finish it. Funny though. Um, That's the point. (laughs) Uh if you couldn't finish it. Okay, okay, so this one. I like like what this person said. If you can't finish a movie, you shouldn't review it. I agree yeah, with that, yeah. Exactly. So this one's a three stars. Gooey horror goodness. I like that answer. Yeah, that's, that's fair. <laughs> that's a good answer. What the movie like, was. Yeah, mm-hmm. gooey horror goodness. Uh, I'll find one more and we'll, we'll call her there. Um, maybe. Because <laughs> if people ask me about a movie I couldn't finish, the only thing I would say is I couldn't finish it. I couldn't it. finish it. I couldn't Sorry. 
God damn it. Where'd all yeah, the... The only thing I could say is I didn't like it. I couldn't finish it. Yeah, that's that's all you could say about it. Yeah. Like, I couldn't finish the movie. Okay, here's one star. Comedy? Question mark. Fucking hell no. Rotten B movie? Question mark. Yes. Somebody doesn't like the blob. You're right. Um, or tomatoes. Anyway, or tomatoes. That's all I'm going to do for those. Uh, let's see here. What are we doing next week, Karen? Well, we didn't do trivia yet. Fuck, it's trivia. Yeah, hey. Join we just did the nods. Trivia. <laughs> we don't have much. Sweet ass trivia with Karen. Uh, Rob Zombie was the voice of Dr. Carl talking to Starla on the phone. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> uh, I, Philly, think I, I think I might have knew that. It, well, you, you could tell it was him. No, I mean, it I think I might have like knew him. that by, I think I knew that. Oh, you knew him. that before. Okay. Yeah. Philion recalled Gunn telling him that we are making a funny movie, but we're not making a comedy. From that point forward, Philion better understood the tonal balance he needed to <laughs> aim for. Grant is established as wealthy and worried about other men showing active interest in his beautiful wife, and he has his controlling side that is definitely inching towards the wrong side of turning ugly. But when given the chance to sleep with Brenda, he refuses her advances. James Gunn revealed that Grant died as soon as he was infected, but the resulting entity retained much of his personality, including his genuine love for Starla. Yep. And I got that. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Gunn absolutely hated the scene where the silly Muppet deer attacks Bill. I actually liked that part. I laughed really hard. It was so dumb. <laughs> it was so bad, too. Like, it was the Bill very was definitely, the deer was definitely fake. Yeah. But it was just so funny. Like, it cracked me up. I it was know. a good, it was a good B moment. You know it, what I mean? And I think that, I think that's, if they were going for that, it landed. Yeah. So, that, and I guess that's the vibe I got was that's yeah. what they were going I, for. That's why I was like, that, like this has to be just like a nod to like just B movies in general. So I guess I think maybe that's what they weren't going for. So that's why he hated it so much. I got that's what they were going for. I did too. So like, that's why like I loved it. For you know that what reason. it reminded me yeah. of? It reminded me of that Jackalope thing that they used to have on American Funny America's Funniest Videos. It looked kind of like how fake that looked. Yeah, it just looked like like it wouldn't even like functioning. It was just like this like. It was, it was like somebody had the legs and they were yeah, just going like, like this. like this with it. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just like, and it fell over. It was just like. And like, he's like this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, he also was not a fan of the scene where the worms cover Starla and Bill. I think the worms looked really bad. Uh, Philion had wanted to work with Gunn since seeing the Dawn of the Dead remake. Oh, we forgot about that one. Yeah, he. I love that remake, which Gunn had written. He actually auditioned Gunn for Gunn wrote that? Yeah. Yeah. The one that Zack Snyder did? Yeah. That's such a good movie. It is. is that I in the lo- box? What's that? Is that in the box? I don't know. I'll look when we get Because that is a good fucking movie. That, that's, I love that's that. That's probably one of the best remakes I've ever that seen. Is, that is one of my favorite. Yeah. Like, my favorite zombie movie is Day of the Dead. But that is a close second. I really love that I'm remake. not a huge... Like, I don't mind Day of the Dead, but it's definitely not one of my favorites. Oh, I love it. It's the best it's, death it's scene got in the, the world. Best. And I'm not, I'm not talking about the colonel guy. Oh. I'm talking about the dude... That falls onto that um, pallet, falls onto the pallet, and then they like grab his neck and his head, and they start pulling, and his head comes apart. I thought that was that's not the colonel. Oh no, no, the colonel got ripped in half. Yeah, no, they pull his head off, and the best part about that scene is they're pulling his head off, and as they're pulling, you can hear his voice box because he's screaming the whole time. Oh yeah, I remember that. And, oh, and, it's so heart wrenching, or not heart wrenching. It's like it's very. It, it's it's done so well because yeah. you can actually hear his voice box coming apart. Yeah. Like that is the best death scene I've ever seen in my life. George A. Romero went somewhere with that movie. <laughs> like, yeah. You can't forget, man. <laughs> well, what I love about that movie is the abs. If we ever do it, I'll I'll yeah. talk about it anyway. Um, I think that's one of the like if we ever did those movies, it would have to be like. I think we put those in there. I think, I think we that put, like, you the have to do them in succession. Like, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, I think we put the trilogy in there, but we'll look. Uh, da, 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 da. He actually auditioned for the film, but was passed over. They said they wanted someone to be more of a young blonde woman. Explains Philly <laughs> for Dawn of the Dead. Oh, <laughs> the postcard. Sorry, more of a young blonde woman. <laughs> <laughs> the postcard crash scene was filmed on a night that was below zero and at the mercy of a Hell's Angels party across the seat, the street. One of the bikers got a ticket for crossing a barricade into the production area, and he subsequently became very angry and began setting off fireworks to interrupt filming. Nathan Fillion confirmed that one of the things he really enjoyed about playing Bill was 
his bewildered and terrified what the fuck is going on reaction to almost everything that happened rather than reacting like a standard action hero would. I like that's what I like yeah, so much that, about him. Yeah, it makes yeah. it more believable. Like yeah, he's actual... he's more of an average Joe yeah. rather than this like I'm here to save the fucking day. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I'm the guy that's gonna save. He's your more ass. like what the fuck is going on? Like, yeah. I don't understand any of this. The whole yeah. octopus, like when they kept bringing up the octopus man, like they're making jokes about it. It's yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you guys seen that, right? Yeah. <laughs> the post credits coda shows a cat getting possessed by the last surviving creature. In an early draft, this was meant to happen to Bill. After the Grant creatures destroyed, Starla sees the resulting wound later, prompting her to shoot Bill to death. Thank God they didn't go with that. Yeah, I wouldn't like that as much. And that is it. That's okay. all the trivia. It's not a lot of trivia. No. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. All right. Fairly decent. Uh, next week, Karen. What are we watching? Uh, what are we watching, Karen? This goes a little better. I'm going to try to do a little closer to me because over there is apparently terrible. <laughs> Spaceballs. Let's hope. The Autopsy of Jane Doe. Fuck. We, we put that in there? Yeah. What? What That's is another that? horror movie, though. Okay. You want to put it back? Let's Here, I'll put it back. Put it back. Put it back. Let's back. find something I want else. a horror. I don't want another horror movie. I We've been on else. a horror, like. Yeah, we have. We've done, like, a bunch of horror movies lately. Spirited Away. Yes! I've never seen that. You've never yeah, seen it? It's so good. We're going to love that. Spirit Away. It's not even, it's nowhere near horror. It's, uh, um, oh, man, what's that director? Here, hold on a second. I'll look what, it is up. Is it on anything, Karen, or mm-hmm. do I need to borrow it from you? I don't know. I think they have them for, I think they actually have Spirit Away in a bunch of his films at Walmart right now for sale. Oh, yeah. So, let me look up. It's like, man, he's a famous director. Hold on. It's on Max. Max. Okay. A young girl, Chihiro, becomes trapped in a strange new Wait. world of spirits when her parents undergo a mysterious transformation. Oh, let's, let's she must call upon the courage she never knew she had to free her family. Let me see the picture of it. Subs. Maybe the Kendra likes. If this is if it's subtitled, you don't want to watch it that way. Kendra's been wanting me to watch. If it's, no, what that means is that um, it it's a sub of Max. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not. Um, so like, if you have Prime, you can use Prime as your right. sub to use to get Max. I don't remember. This is a Studio Ghibli movie, so um, that's where like like is it they, an anime? It is. It is. Um, so it's also like if you've like Howl's Moving Castle, uh, My Neighbor Totoro. Like, uh, you know, Jess, Jess loves my neighbor Totoro. She's got the sticker or whatever the decal, and um, she like that's actually that picture right there is from Spirited Away, the one above your head right there. Oh, okay, that's Spirited Away. Um, but if you guys, if you haven't seen this movie, and if you're listening to this podcast, I want her. This is a family friendly, fun movie. Like, it's so good. It's very sweet the the voice acting's amazing the animation's amazing um it's just a fun crazy fantasy movie and it's it's really good it should be interesting because i don't really watch oh you're gonna i I think karen i think you're gonna love this oh no this is fine i'm just saying this is gonna be interesting for me i don't really seek anime out so right yeah but this is like so if you're not even if you're not an anime fan, this is the type of movie that I would suggest. Like if you're not into anime, but you're like looking for something to, to maybe introduce, to yeah, to introduce I've seen you anime. to it. I watched a like this what? is that kind of movie that you that just about anybody can watch and love. Like I know I know Madison's going to be excited for this one because mm-hmm. she loves. She brought it. I think she was the one that wanted yeah, to put she, it in the box. Yeah, I made her watch it one time and she absolutely loved it. So this was one she wanted in the box. I think this was one that she. Yeah, she I think put it in. is. Yeah, I think you're right. So. And next week, be on next week too. So, and I'm glad we're doing another family movie. I get tired of just doing horror movies, and mm-hmm. we've done a lot of horror movies lately. No, we so. we we sh- that's the whole point is to have a mix. A, we a have variety. a mix, yeah, you know? yeah. And we don't need to always do like we did the Alien movie. And I'm glad we drew Alien and then Aliens. That's fun, you know. I love that. I hope I hope we draw the other Alien movies kind of in succession because I'm I haven't seen those in so long. And I don't want to like. We could probably work something forget. out. Maybe instead of drawing it from the box, we just say, "Hey, let's just go ahead and do that." Yeah. Things, you know? I don't want to forget. Like I don't want to lose the 
Yeah, you can, especially since like the first one and the second one are so fresh in our minds. Yeah. But. You guys want to start asking the audience like when we have people start commenting, you know. We, we will eventually, it, yeah. yeah. If we, eventually if we start getting that. that. Yeah, we start getting that uh, pretty often, you know, like. We start, we start if you guys start interacting with us more and all that then we'll, we'll start, start to ask we'll start asking and yeah. and we'll let you guys it's at some point i mean the we'll Patreon be at your mercy still, at some yeah, point yeah yeah anyway uh so next week is spirited away and don't forget to um check us out on our facebook twitter tiktok um make sure you like share subscribe like the video please um because it helps push us a little bit also don't forget to um rate us on spotify or wherever you get your podcasts whether it be spotify i apple i i damn it what's it called itunes itunes that's it or yeah it's itunes isn't it yeah is it yeah it's apple podcast oh apple podcast yeah see you had me confused Karen. well but itunes like that's what <sighs> iTunes is that, like, that yeah. why do they have two different ones? I don't know. They do the same thing with a bunch of shit like that. Like even Google and, and Amazon. Yeah, that's true. So it's weird. Whatever. Either way, check us out, rate us, all that good stuff. And uh comment if you can leave a comment. So uh until next week. Bye. Bye. Okay, bye. Bye.